Welcome, everyone. It's time for NBA action, coming to you live on this Saturday night. I'm Kevin Harlan. With me tonight, former NBA players Richard Jefferson and Greg Anthony, with David Aldridge joining us courtside. D.A., take it away. Thanks very much. Now, improving NBA officiating has gone high-tech. Today, the NBA uses the proprietary game review system, which is broken down from double-digit camera angles. Analysts spend a day or two dissecting each game. And Kevin, that data is used for evaluating, training, and communication with the teams. Isn't that something? I mean, every day there's something new. Fascinating, fascinating stuff, DA. Thank you. Look at the 76ers starting group. Maxi and Harden fill in the guard spots. On the block, it's Tucker next to Embiid. And it's House and at the small forward position. And for Utah, they've got Clarkson. He's out there with Sexton, and it's Markinen in at the power forward. When you have an MVP caliber player like Joel Embiid, you have to be in win mode now. And the Sixers are doing everything they can to get their big fella to the finals. And so here we go, the 76ers to start it. Passes it to Tucker. Out to the wing. Outside, House. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. Is it hard, Richard, to balance the present and the future if you're a team like the 76ers? No, no. You should have 100% focus on here and now. Why? Because players like Embiid only come around every 20, 30 years in your franchise. So you should just hedge all of your bets and try and get it done while you have the window. And it feels like that is truly the direction. There's no deviating from it at all. No, that's the direction. You look at the champions, the Golden State Warriors, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Lakers. They have all done the same thing. They went into win-now mode. Here's Maxson after Jordan Clarkson's bucket. Unloads from nine. Got a hand on it. Guarded by Embiid. Misses the one-handed jam. It's House outside. Rebound, Utah. The last meeting was in Philadelphia, where they were unable to fight off the 76ers. Yeah, and looking back at their last game against this club, they were badly out-rebounded. Sexton finds Markkinen. I like the decisiveness by Markkinen in the screen and roll, really knowing when to shoot once he gets the screen. Just over a minute and a half played here in this one. Harden outside. With the shot. Another miss by Philadelphia. That was a good look for him from mid-range, but just couldn't make the defense pay. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. All right, Richard, we're right in the middle of the season, right in the thick of things. What is your main concern if you're a player playing at this particular portion of the schedule? Your main concern is staying focused on the game of basketball. We understand everybody's been traded. I've been traded. You've been traded. I've been traded on the deadline before. So your goal is like, how do I just keep focused on basketball? That is the hardest thing. So that's always the trade deadline. You're not worried about anything else other than how do I keep playing my best? And the first one drops. And we've seen it for years. Despite their regular season success, the Jazz just unable to make much noise in the playoffs. Credit the front office for coming to terms with it and pivoting to a rebuild while they could get top value for their stars. And so he makes both from the line. And Greg, the Philadelphia 76ers have made it very clear that they are all in on a title run. And their front office has been very focused on trying to get top-tier talent on this roster. After the trust the process era, they're now aggressively pursuing titles here in Philly. Still very early, but that's not the start they want. One for five shooting. Guarded by Hart. Good work there as it goes. Sexton has to just keep developing his court awareness. You want to see more passing from him. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. 
They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Here is House. And the officials call him for a three-second violation. Have a chance now to take a look at some numbers for Lowry Markkinen. And we got to take a second look to admire that outstanding block. And an early swat like that can really set the tone. Now the shooters will be feeling his presence. Just over two and a half minutes played here so far in the first quarter. Over to the left wing. Buries the long-range jumper. Markkinen's got his second bucket of the night. Oh, great ball movement there. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. They want to keep rolling here following the win against the Thunder. Yeah, I mean, we saw them do a little bit of everything in that game. Showed a lot of versatility. It really is fun seeing an offensive function like a well-oiled machine. I'll be interested to see if they can keep doing this. The 76ers trail by eight. Harden outside. Back to Maxi. Pass to Harden. Looking to end the run. The long distance three is buried. There's that unlimited range that James Harden and maybe a couple other guys on the planet can shoot from. He just shoots the deep ball with such confidence. Now, here's Sexton. 17 points in his last outing. Up top, Markinen. Lock at six. Shoots over Tucker. And it's James Harden with the rebound. And it's Harden with the ball for the Philadelphia 76ers. It's a five-point game. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in the first. Philadelphia's gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Outside, Maxi. Off target from outside. Jazz leading by five. Here's Toscano. Clarkson outside. Now the pass to Markinen. Stolen by Tucker. And here's the pass break. Maxi leading the way. And they recover it. Embiid kicks to Maxi. That's in. Coming off the assist from Embiid. And an impressive passer at the five spot. Embiid always has a great feel for when his guys are open. Here's Markinen. No good that time. And Philadelphia the other way now. Here's Harden. And it's all evened up. Harden's got five now. Look at those handles. Look at James Harden getting crafty with the ball, mixing up the defender. And that was the mobile one drive. Well worth a second look. And that's what a coach loves to see in a close game. Just put your head down and make something happen. Now, here's Sexton. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Pass to Toscano. Back to Sexton. To the middle. Another miss by Utah. And he felt like he needed a little bit more space with the fade to get off a shot, but that might have been what threw him off and made a miss. Rate of baskets assisted, it's a stat I really like. It tells the story of how well you are playing team offense. And a first time out of the game called for Utah. They're trying to stem the tide here. On the wrong side of a scoring run here, we might see a lineup change. I'll, I'll be pretty curious. And the Jazz with possession here. Trailing by two. Clarkson outside. Passes it to Toscano. To stop the drought, Markinen score the basket his third after five shots. Oh man, he's feeling it this quarter. They should be looking to get him going every trip down the floor. Philadelphia's gone 3 of 6, 50% from deep so far tonight. 
And marketing can give you, Greg, a solid defensive effort at both the three and the four. And Kevin, many thought marketing was a defensive liability, but given credit, worked hard to prove he wasn't. And while not a superb defender, he has become a plus defender for this team. No doubt he's struggling right now from the field. Let's see if he can get it going this quarter. Sexton against Harden. Was shot by Sexton. No good. The 76ers shooting 36% in this first quarter. Trying to get their bearings. Got that one up quick. Maxie's got six. Yeah, great outside shooting. Really fueling this run. Oh, let's go home. That was just <laughs> ridiculous. I do not remember the last time I saw a dunk like that in a game. And now another look at that great drive and finish brought to you by Mobile One. That's an incredible move by him on what's been an impressive night all around. And that one's good. House, seven points in the game. And Utah has possession. It's a three-point game. Harden against Clarkson. And the foul on Harden. That is his first foul of the game. Kelly Olenek's checked in for Lowry Markinen. Montrez Harrell, he's checked in for the 76ers. Harris comes in for Daniel House. Sexton against Maxi. Clarkson passes to Toscano. Clock at four. Over Harris. Some solid defense from Harris. Here's Philadelphia. They're on a 15-4 run right now. Maxi looking it over. Kicks it out to Harden. Rebound by Olenek. Jazz trail by three. Sexton with it. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring hit from him. With the teardrop, and the shot goes down. And he is just an explosive athlete. Sexton not at all phased by the contact. And so it's Max who brings up the ball for Philadelphia. And Philadelphia calls time here. And you know there aren't many teams with a more dedicated fan base than Utah. The Jazz fans are behind their team no matter what. For the Jazz, Horton Tucker's checked in for Clarkson, and it's done in for Colin Sexton. Then for the 76ers, George Niang, he's checked in for Embiid, and it's DeAnthony Melton in for Maxi. Niang, that's good. It's always striking, Greg, to see the bond between the Jazz team and their followers. Well, when you're the only game in town, people take the team to heart. And we see it in cities like Portland and San Antonio as well. The fans form that attachment to their team. There wasn't a lot of resistance there at that rim. He just, he just tricked off a little bunny. They get it back. Harold off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Uh, the dogged intensity Harold has is just insane. And, and he uses all this energy to his advantage, particularly on the glass. Now, here's Dunn. Here's Toscano. Inside. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. And really, the improvement as a finisher is noticeable for Kelly Olenek. The 76ers leading by four. Pass to Melton. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. He kicks to Harris. Six to shoot. Harrell, the pass to Harris. 
Utah with the rebound. Last game matched up with the Magic. A tough loss there. Yeah, I mean, they had their chances. Competed deep into that game, but had a few lulls there that just kind of took them down. They played pretty solid basketball, but a few miscues is all it takes to turn a win into a loss, especially against a good team. Here's Melton following the bucket by the Jams. Harris passes to Harrell. The second chance effort. Count it. Good. Harrell's got his second bucket of the night. And improving as a shot maker every year. Harrell has to be accounted for defensively. Melton feeling it out a bit. Steps back and fires. That one doesn't go. Done with some nice D. Jazz trail by four. Horton Tucker. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. That is really good work there on the offensive glass. The pass to Melton. Got a piece of it. Melton against Dunn. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. It's going to be on James Harden. And one area of concern for Dunn, hitting his free throws with consistency because he has the temperament to draw fouls. And what do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for Philadelphia? First free throw is good. And about the 76ers, Richard, they've been impressive. Yeah, they've been on a 50-win pace for about the last five seasons. And with Joel Embiid every single year, you are going to be a contender. This is their window, and they are bringing in the talent to get it done. And the 76ers making a change here. Milton's checked in. That one drops. He ties it up. We've got 128 left in the first. Melton passes to Niang. Back to Melton. Puts up a three. They get it back. Here's Harrell. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. It's going to be on Rudy Gay. And it's tough for defenders to match Harrell's energy. He just never stops working. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Numbers this year at the line below 70. So when he's getting to the line, not nearly as effective as he'd like. Now, here's Dunn. Pass to Abaji. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. For Utah, they have hit all four of their chances so far in this one. And how about as a group, 80% on the season, one of their best attributes. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first one falls. So he gets them both. And here are the 76ers now. Harris kicks to Melton. Passes it to Niang. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. And they've done well at taking advantage of some late defensive rotations and getting the ball in the paint. 34 seconds left in the first quarter. To the inside. Abaji. 
And the height Dunn possesses is what allows him to see the floor so well. So good at setting up his guys for quality shots. 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. Melton kicks to Milton. Back to Melton. To the paint. Out to Harris. A three ball. It's hauled in by Dunn. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin. Particularly here to start the game. Harris finds Melton. And that one goes long. Tie game in Utah. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. And this has been a fairly close game through the first quarter, and we'll see what happens here in the second. What do you guys think about the Jazz here in this one? What we saw in that first quarter, uh, they won their matchups defensively. Making it as difficult as possible for the offense to find clean looks. Great stuff. Utah with the ball. At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Minnesota where they'll take on the Timberwolves. That'll be just one game played away from home for them. So with Harden on the bench, here's the five for Doc Rivers right now. Embiid is out there with Harold. Then it's Shake Milton. Then there's Tyrese Maxey. And it's house and at the three side. And that's when they say you can't teach tall. This is where size helps you. Owning those rebounds on the defensive end. Here's Milton. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. It's on Jordan Clarkson. Richard, safe to say you were a pretty good defender in your day. So tell me, who was the most difficult player you had to defend? I've had to guard some of the best scorers in NBA history. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. But there is nobody like Kevin Durant. His height, his skill set. KD is probably the most unguardable player we've ever seen. All Hall of Famers. Wow. Now, here's Clarkson. 17 points for him last game against Orlando. Even when he first came into the league, this was Clarkson's go-to move. Pressing the action off the dribble. Philadelphia's gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. 5 of 12. Maxi against Sexton. Here's Embiid. Offensive rebound. Harold the pass to House. Here's Milton. Here's Harold. And foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. And when you think of Harold... His endless energy is what comes to mind first. This guy just hustles and works every moment he's out there. And that one misses. James Harden. He's checked in for Shake Milton. And he sinks the second. Here in the second quarter with a little over a minute gone. Clarkson taking his time here. Down low. That's good from Gay on the assist by Markinen. Okay, he's got his first bucket of the night. And you got to like the vision for marketing. I mean, a big man who knows how to find the open man. Outside, Maxi. Back to Harden. Here's the teardrop. And the whistle blows as the basket counts. And a three-point play chance right here. One free throw coming up. Well, that, that's one way he can finish, but far from the only way he gets it done. He's got all kinds of tricks up his sleeve. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for the 76ers. A scoring machine. There's just no shot and beads and afraid to take. Look, some of James Harden's career numbers are crazy. But he's also got a lot of firsts to go along with those overall totals, like the first 60-point triple-double. A putback. Utah gets it back. Markin and finds Clarkson. Harden with the defensive effort. And they haven't been able to turn it into a big lead, but their rebound advantage is starting to add up. The 
76ers have gone one of three to start out the second quarter. And Harden was the first player to average 35 points and seven assists in a season. Yeah, and that was in the 2018-19 season. The same year, he was also the first player to score at least 30 points against every other team. No one had done that since the NBA expanded in 2004. And you're asking for more trouble than you can handle if you're going to let him just roam free from beyond the arc. Utah calls timeout. You're trying to stem the tide here. On the wrong side of a scoring run here, we might see a lineup change. I'll, I'll be pretty curious. One Toscano Anderson's checked in for the Jazz. And for those of you just joining us, we're almost two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Larson outside. Pass to Toscano. The Jazz again can't hit it. That is not a guy you want to allow open looks for range. Lucky for the defense, he just couldn't get it to go. The shot by House is no good. And so Markinen will bring it up for the Utah Jazz. And now we've got some time to check in from the sidelines. They got for us, D.A. Thank you, guys. Now, Tobias Harris has been the leading scorer on teams in the NBA. But on the Sixers, he understands his role is different. He says, I'm not a guy who's going to press for looks. The ball's going to flow how it flows, and I just got to be ready when the opportunity comes my way. That's what winning basketball is all about. Kevin? David, thank you. Well, Greg, what can you say about Joel Embiid's growth from a leadership perspective? Pretty impressive, isn't it? Tremendous, Kevin. Carrying the Sixers with everything they went through, even though he came in second in MVP voting two years in a row, no player more important to his team than Joel Embiid. And the first one drops. And I feel like one of the more underrated aspects of Embiid's game is his passing. He understands that teams are going to bring two, sometimes three. You have to make quick decisions with the ball when that happens. Embiid, he embraces that challenge. Now, here's Clarkson. He's been playing a big part of their offensive scheme, averaging around 15 and a half points a game. And once Markinen flips the switch, it's fun to watch. Love seeing him be that aggressive. Harden outside. House kicks to Maxi. Harden the pass to Tucker. Here is House. Five on the clock. The three from Harden. Sexton grabs the board. Jazz trail by three. Inside. Here's Markinen. And there's another one for the Jams. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed 10 straight points in the paint. And there's the pass to House. To the middle. Here's Embiid. That shot off. For Utah, they've gotten just over 50% of their shots to drop here in the second quarter. They're 5 for 9. Clarkson against Harden. Outside, Maxi launches a 3. Harden can't hit. And even though he hasn't been himself, it hasn't affected his team too much. They've still got the lead. Sexton, and oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Richard, you grew up in Arizona. Uh, what do you think of the Suns right now and what they've done the last two seasons? Oh, how much time do you got? All my <laughs> friends back home are just loving it. Chris Paul, he has helped change the culture with Monty Williams. Great job by the front office. They have put in so much young talent, and they have coached them up. They are a complete team, and like I said, how much time you got? We could do this all day. We could indeed. And it's tied up with that one. And that's one of those guys who just tends to live at the line. Sexton's working hard to improve his consistency there. And that one falls, and that puts him up by one point. 
Philadelphia's gotten the three-point bug tonight. They've taken 15 shots outside the arc. Six of 15. Here is House. Ten points for him. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. This is why he's out there. In situations like this, he stands tall to prevent points. Here's Toscano. The Jazz with another miss. Now, here's Maxi. Here is House. Fades back. Embiid, no good. Utah has gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Here's Sexton, and Sexton slams it in. It's just a creative ball handler. Sexton does a really good job with his change of speeds and direction, keeping the defender off balance. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. And the 76ers call time here. Well, it's been an express lane to the rim. Coach can't be happy about that. Yeah, we can see over here. The coach, he has some choice words for his team. Words we cannot repeat. And Philadelphia making a change here. Harris has checked in. On the wing, Harden. He's covered by Clarkson. And Embiid throws it down. No stopping Embiid inside. He is a beast. Clarkson against Harden. Clarkson outside. Pass to Markinen. And Sexton has it in the corner. And the officials will call the illegal screen right there. When a pick like that is questionable and creates that much of an advantage for the offense, you have to blow the whistle. You gotta blow the whistle when it's that obvious. Great call there by the official. Kelly Olynyk checked in for the Jazz. Dunn comes in for Jordan Clarkson. Now here is Harris. 17 points for him last game against Oklahoma City. He's more than chipped in on the glass as well. Just a tremendous effort last time out. How done? After the miss three from Joel Embiid, Dunn passes to Olenek. Score the basket, his second of two attempts. And look at how Dunn slices apart the defense with his passing. Phenomenal in the pick and roll. And Philadelphia has possession. Maxi kicks it to Tucker. Passes it to Harden. And Kelly Olenek is going to pick up the foul. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. And not the guy you want to send to the line. He has been automatic. Well, James Harden's still a tremendous player, but now in his early 30s, some question, can he be the dominant MVP force we saw in Houston? Horton Tucker's checked in for Toscano Anderson. George Niang, he's checked in for the 76ers. DeAnthony Melton comes in for Maxi. He doesn't get the second one. And Greg Harden in recent years dealing with hamstring injuries. Has he lost a step to age or injury? You know, probably a little of both. But we've seen players with a new diet or training regimen get back to peak production. Hopefully he can as well. The 76ers trail by four. Has to melt. Here's Embiid. And three chances on that possession. But they just couldn't find a way to score. To the paint, the eight-footer, Markinen. And Philadelphia grabs the miss. And Bede's got nine rebounds now tonight. On the way, Harris. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Here's Harden. And the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him making the circus shots. That's just a routine play for James Harden at this point in time. All right, well, look at how the points have been generated so far. Scoring breakdown for Utah. Throw good, James Harden. 
And at this stage in Harden's career, he's all about winning. He wants to win as many titles as he can. Olenek finds Sexton. Nice ball movement by Utah. Harden against Dunn. He's gone two for two at the line so far. He's off on the first. And some changes here for the 76ers. Harrell comes in for Joel Embiid. And it's Shake Milton in for James Harden. And he's good on the second. And here's Melton. He'll bring it up for the 76ers. Trailing by two. Takes it inside. No good. That would have tied it. And he's usually able to score on that type of defense rather easily. Surprising to see him come away empty. The feed to Dunn. Olenek trying to break loose. And there's Dunn on the assist by Markkanen. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. And that last look brought to you by the AT&T 5G Slam King. On the wing, Harris. Rebounded by the Jazz. And here is Dunn. Seven points in the game. Markinen dishes to Sexton. Horton Tucker, the pass to Markinen. From outside the arc, the putback. It's good on the putback. And now a six point Jazz lead. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. Out left to the wing. And the pass to Milton. Six on the shot clock. It's over Olenek. Not going to go that time. So Utah will take it the other way. How done. Pass to Sexton. To the inside. The jump hook. And it's wide right. It's off the rim. The 76ers trail by six. Here's Milton. Another miss by Philadelphia. Utah's got nothing but zeros from long range in the second quarter. 0 of 4. Dunn kicks to Markinen, and Markinen throws it down. And rising with such ease, Markinen likes to get up top to bring it down. Philadelphia's gotten into trouble with the three ball in the second quarter, only hitting one of five attempts. Back to Melton. Inside. Will it go? And with that shot, the Jazz lead is cut down now to just six points with that basket from Harrell. And, and Kevin, they started the game shooting it so well. I I'm surprised they had to continue. They've got to get back to their strength. You thought that first quarter was good? He's been even better in the second. A minute 20 left to play here in the half. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, that, their offense has ground to a standstill. Passes to Milton. On the wing, Milton. Defended by Sexton. Puts it up from 12. Markinen pulls it in. Markinen's got 12 rebounds here tonight. Big time effort. Harris against Dunn. To the paint. Here's Markinen. That's in. Coming off an assist from Dunn. And now it's a 10-point Jazz lead. And they've had assists now in their last three baskets.
Philadelphia shooting only 32% from the field. Plenty of signs of struggle by this offense today. Now here is Harris. He's covered closely. Solid rebound there. And with the score like it is, that's an area where they can't afford to get lazy. Here's Horton Tucker in the hoop for his third make from the field. He's three for four thus far in the contest. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. The 76ers trail by 12. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Milton with the ball. 11 points for him in that last game against Oklahoma City. Left side, Harris. Here's Harrell. It's blocked. Lowry marking and getting it done for the Jam. They've leaned on him for offense, and he hasn't let him down. He's now up to 23 points today. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. You. Thanks, guys. Joined by Doc Rivers. Coach, what did you think of the effort in the first half? It's fine, I guess. Uh, defensively, we got to be better, so that's part of the effort. But they're just scoring too easy. They're throwing us around. They are so much more the physical team right now, so we got to pick up our physicality. I'm sure that will be discussed thoroughly before the next half. Thanks. Back to you guys. Thanks, David. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back to the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is right here. Say hey to the folks, Kenny. Hey, folks. Say hey to the folks, folks, Shaq. Hey, folks. folks. Hey, let's get this party started. Okay. Lowry Markkinen had a huge first quarter. He had 23 points, 12 rebounds, and two assists. Shaq, how'd you think the Jazz were playing? Ball movement was a real factor for them. They played unselfishly with patience. The guys got shots in the face. Get those opportunities, looks, good things tend to happen. And Kenny, your take on Philadelphia. The energy on D stood for disappointment. They were slow to rotate, communication was bad, no effort. I mean, the intensity on that end of the floor, where it needs to be, was just not there. And that's a wrap. With the third quarter approaching, we now send you back to Kevin and the crew. And after a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. I'll remark it in having a dominant impact in this game. Well, with the double-double in hand through two quarters, you can just imagine what his stat line will look like at the end of this one. But I don't think that that's the most important thing to him. Sure, putting up big numbers doesn't hurt, but he's all about getting the win over everything else. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Howie Markinen is out there with Kelly Olenek. Then there's Dunn. Then there's Jordan Clarkson. And it's Toscano in at the small forward. And that's the group for Will Hardy as they begin the second half. Now, here's Dunn. On the wing, Harden. He's covered by Clarkson. Out to the right wing. Shoots it. Here's Embiid. Drops in the layup for two. Embiid's got the first points of the third quarter up on the board for Philadelphia. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. That one on Maxi. I love seeing Dunn use his creative side to get these calls. He is simply amazing at putting defenders in a tough spot. And the first one at the line is good. He's perfect from the line this time. 
The 76ers trail by 12. Harden scanning the floor. That's tipped. And B trying to break loose. Tucker can't get it to go. Defense pulled out all the stops to shut him down there. Here's Dunn. That shot, no good. Some solid defense from Maxie. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Now, I understand he's a large human, but the defense has to be better. You can't let Embiid get whatever he wants inside. Now, here's Dunn. He's got nine. Pass two, Toscano. Kicks it to Clarkson. Just five on the clock. Unloads from 13. The rebound by Harden. Harden's got five rebounds tonight. It's House outside. Embiid. And Embiid is right there. Embiid's got it back down to within single digits for Philadelphia. And how about that reach of Embiid using those long arms to just gobble up second chance opportunities? Olinick inside, guarded by Tucker. And there's the whistle. Illegal screen. Well, when a pick like that is questionable and creates that much of an advantage for the offense, you have to blow the whistle. You gotta blow the whistle when it's that obvious. Great call there by the official. Always good to get another look at a terrific defensive play. And a block like that sends a message. One that says we're not giving up this lead. The 76ers trail by eight. Second half of play with just under two and a half minutes gone. The shot by House is no good. And they had some boxed coverage that turned into no coverage. Here's Abaji. He's covered by Maxi. To the middle. Here's Toscano. Nice pass. Right under the rack perfectly for the layup. And the Jazz lead by 10. And so it's Harden bringing it up for the Philadelphia 76ers. Well, Rudy Gay was born in Brooklyn. Over 100 NBA players hail from that borough of New York City, making it a hotbed for Hoops Town. And here's Clarkson. James Harden getting it to go from deep. Clarkson against Maxi, And the rejection by Embiid. Every year he's a defensive player of the year candidate. His instincts, that's what makes Embiid outstanding. And his awareness of when to go for the block. A lot of talent indeed. And Rudy Gay is just one of many stars hailing from Brooklyn. And future Hall of Famer Carmelo Anthony was born there. And just like Rudy, was in Maryland for high school. Kemba, Bernard King, Lenny Wilkins, other legends from the Brooklyn Borough. Third quarter of basketball here in just a little under three and a half minutes gone by. To the right side. Clarkson outside. The pass to Abaji. And once again, off the mark by Utah. Out of halftime, not the way you want to execute. Just one of five from the field. Here's House. Rebound, Utah. This is the definition of forcing it. He's trying to get himself going, but taking tough shots just won't do it. Rare you'll see him miss such an open look. Harden outside. Outside Maxi. Pass to House. Shot clock at five. And the 76ers get it back. Yet another possession they've managed to hold on to. They are really in control on offense. Here's Harden. On the wing, Harden. 
drives yet again, and the layup is up and in. Harden's got five points now this quarter. I'll tell you, they're right in this. We'll see if they can maintain momentum. Things are firing on all cylinders for them right now. We'll see if they can keep it going. Here's Abaji. Trying to end the drought. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It's going to be on James Harden. Clearly a foul. And guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for Utah? First free throw is good. Both good from the line that time. Impeccable from the line since halftime. Pass to House. Feeds it to Harden. Good for basket number six from him in the contest. He's shooting six for 12. They're not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. Clarkson passes to Toscano. Guarded by Embiid. Pass to Abaji. Here's Toscano. And it's off from three-point range. Well, he better buy his teammates dinner tonight because they've covered him for what has been a terrible, absolute terrible shooting display. Utah leading by three. Here's Gay, and there's the drive, and then Gay with the dunk. And I just love how Gay penetrates to the bucket. I mean, always looking for the highlight reel play, showing off that awesome bird. 76ers have gone 7 of 15 from the field here in the third quarter. Now the pass to Maxi to the wing right side. Here is House. He's got 10. He kicks it to Tucker. Pass to Maxi. The Jazz making a switch here. Sexton's checked in. Tobias Harris is checked in for Philadelphia. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. It's deflected. Down low. Stolen by Harden. Passes it to Maxi. Kicks it to Tucker. Sexton against Harden. Back to Tucker. Shot clock at six. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got his sixth assist on the night. Don't you forget, Harden's won an assist title now. And this man can pass that rock. Here's Toscano. He feeds it to Gay. Tipped away. Stolen by Tucker. And Rudy Gay picks up the foul. And that'll be his third foul so far. Horton Tucker's checked in for Toscano Anderson. Then for the 76ers, Montrez Hill comes in for P.J. Tucker. And it's DeAnthony Melton in for Joel Embiid. 76ers trailing. Harden kicks to Harrell. Pass to Maxi. And here's Harden. And there's the feed to Harris. Over Gay. Here's Harrell. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. Something that's kept this game close is the fact that the rebound stats for both teams are almost identical. He's made three of his four free throw attempts in the game. Lowry Markinen's checked in for the Jazz. And Philadelphia also making a switch. Milton's checked in.
And that drops, so they now lead by one. Jazz have gone just 25% from the field here in the second half. They're two of eight. Here's Horton Tucker. He's got six. Kicks it out to Gay. The pass to Markinen. Here's Horton Tucker. He's guarded by Melton. Buries it from three-point range. Gay's got seven points. And Gay is quick at getting his shot off. Can't give this guy any separation, even as the pass is coming his way. Timeout called the 76ers. It's been quite a game for Lowry Markinen. And he's been taking it to the rack all game, and they haven't been able to contain him. They have to put up better fight on the inside. Now, here's Milton. He's averaging a bit over five points a game. Pass to Maxi. Pass to Harris. To the middle. Here's Harold, and Harold slams it in. Just a beautiful job of scanning the floor, finding the open man. Harris looking to involve his teammates. Gay outside. Pass to Sexton. Guarded by Harris. And he uses the glass on the way. And you gotta love the big bucket in the paint in this sort of a grind it out game. The pass to Melton. And he drives in. No good that time. So Utah will take it the other way. They've held a 12-point lead early. Sexton, the pass to Markinen. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton's got his fifth assist in this one. The 76ers trail by four. Pass to Maxi. On the wing, Melton. Utah with the rebound. Horton Tucker's got his fourth rebound in this one. And if you're looking for the main reason that they're trailing in this game, well, look no further than his shooting. I mean, he has hit exactly 0% of his shot. And there's the bucket for Markinen. I, I love his shot selection today. He set the bar for the rest of the team. Passes it to Milton. Here's Horton Tucker. Six points for him, and it's good for two. And it's an eight-point Jazz lead. Yeah, that was the third straight high-percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. He shot well from the line tonight, going four for five. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. Kelly Olenix checked in for the Jazz. Dunn comes in for Rudy Gay. And both free throws good for Harold. And typically not this reliable at the line, but tonight he's been terrific. 151 left in the third. Horton Tucker, the pass to Dunn, and he converts the layup. Dunn's got four this quarter. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting it in the paint and continue to score consistently. The 76ers trail by eight. To the paint. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. It's on Lowry Markinen. He was not going to settle on that play. Harris works his way inside and does a good job of drawing the foul. And since Tobias Harris got his big contract with the Sixers, Greg, some say they chose him over Jimmy Butler. And while Tobias is nice, he's never been an all-star. 
And that's one of the few downsides to a big payday. Some might say he's overpaid. Uh, I'm sure he'll take the trade off. And he makes the first. Season after season, it seems like Tobias Harris only proves himself more invaluable. He's one of those glue guys. Stick him into almost any lineup and he can contribute. Points, rebounds, assist, whatever you need. And that's what makes him a precious commodity. Now, here's Dunn. He's got 11. To the inside. Got a piece of it. Now, here's Milton. Over done. And with that shot, the Jazz lead is cut down now to just four points with the basket for Milton. Given the size disadvantage, you have to have a lot of confidence to take that shot. And I like his belief in his game. Go at the taller defender, make him react to you. Now, here's Sexton. Six points for him. Here's Olenek. No good there. Some solid defense from Harris. And it's Maxi with the ball for the Philadelphia 76ers. And that game will be game two of five out on the road. Milton passes to Harold. The shot's good. Now just a two-point jazz lead. <laughs> Guys, not much more a defender can do in that situation. Harold with the focus and the strength to just power through the contact. Now here's Dunn. Inside and stolen by Harold. And here's the fast break. Maxi leading the way. Can't tie it up as that one misses. Utah's gone one of four and three point shots here in the third. Markinen. Here's Olinick. And the dunk by Olinick. Often you find him out on the wing, but Olinick seizing the opportunity to go inside and dig out that extra possession. Pass to Harris. Shoots over Olinick. Can't hit the free throw line jump. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. It's the Jazz up four. Don't go anywhere. The final quarter is coming up next on 2K Sports. Here now a chance to show you our assist of the game. And it's presented as always by State Farm. And, and I'm glad this was the pick because I love this pass. Such a great dish. That's what I call court vision. That wasn't a better pass in the game. Almost like he had a sixth sense. Well, this has been a great contest so far, and I imagine the fourth quarter could have even more action in store for us. On the court for Philadelphia to start the fourth, Maxi and Harden fill in the guard spots. Harrell is out there with P.J. Tucker, and it's House in at the three. Utah leading by four. Here's Sexton, and he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. And the nature of the beast. Sexton is just constantly in attack mode looking to make a play. First one falls for him. And the Jazz making a change here. Clarkson's checked in. And Sexton drops them both. The 76ers trail by six. And there's the pass to Harrell. The teardrop falls in. Carroll's got 11 points here in just the second half. 
and this has been Harold's night. They've called his number repeatedly, and boy, has he answered the bell. That was a second look at our Mobile One Drive. Amazing control on display. It's all about the ability to get two feet in the paint, whether it's creating for a teammate or for yourself. Harden, no good. Jazz leading by four. How about a minute played here in the fourth quarter? Clarkson outside. Five to shoot. Toscano passes to Sexton. He can't hit that time. Some solid defense for Maxi. It hasn't been his best game, but his team is still doing just enough to be up. Here's Harold, and Harold slams it in. And once Harold hits the launching pad, the defense doesn't have a lot of good options, making that jam seem unstoppable. Now, here's Sexton. A little over a minute and a half of the fourth quarter gone now. Harkin in with it. He's against Tucker. Another miss by Utah. And if they know what's good for them, that's the way they'll defend against him every time he takes the ball in the three-point lane. And obviously his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. He's just riding the wave of momentum right now, getting to his spots and keeping things simple on the offensive side. Here's Maxi after the main shot from Lowry Markinen. Can't connect from 13 feet out. Enzo, Zexton will bring it up for Utah. They've held a 12-point lead earlier. Left side, Markinen. Outside for Sexton. Pass to Toscano. The three. The shot by Sexton, no good. And you could tell he thought he had a little more space, but the defender was right there. Did a great job closing the gap, making the shooter feel uncomfortable. No one near Maxi as he lets it fly. A three-pointer is right on target. He was solid in the first half from deep. He's a guy who can get hot. Let's see how he does here in the second. This is a two, Toscano. Right side, Markinen. Rebounded by Tucker. 76ers have gone three of seven from the four in the fourth. That's a 42% mark in the court. And out of bounds as the Jazz gain possession. Joel Embiid, he's checked in for Philadelphia. And here is Markkinen with the drive. And Markkinen throws it down. And boy, it's tough. Defensively, you want to be up on Markkinen to contest the jumper, but he can also put it on the floor and blow by you. Harden outside. Fourth quarter of play, and over three and a half minutes have gone by. And Bede kicks to Maxi. Six to shoot. Steps back and shoots. Markinen pulls it in. Markinen's Jazz leading by three. Outside, Sexton. Here's Toscano. In the corner, it's Clarkson. Over Harden. Finishes it off with a one-handed jam. There it is, guys. One of those effort plays that makes a big difference in the game. And GA, it is definitely making a difference so far today. Offensive rebounding is about hustle and determination. Huge putbacks making a statement there. Toscano's shot is good. And now a seven-point jazz lead. Not just a score. Clarkson is very willing to dish it when a teammate's open. Philadelphia's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Harden outside. Right wing. Tucker inside. Arkin and on him. They get it back. No coverage that time. 
and they've shown a little extra hustle on the offensive glass here in the second half. Second chance points are starting to add up for them, and they can use every one of them. Now, here's Markinen. Shoots over Tucker, hits the jump hook. Markinen's got six here in this quarter. And with a unique combination of size and skill, Markinen can finish plays that others simply can't. Now, Maxi. Pass to Harden. To the wing right side. Tucker. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. In the modern NBA, you have to hit threes to win games. And they've made that adjustment since the break. Here's Toscano. Here's Markinen. An easy two points on the layup. Markinen's got 14 points here in the second half. He's been dominant all game long. Nobody on the floor can stop him. And look, let's just say he knows it. Embiid finds Maxi. That three off the mark. And the stroke definitely lacking confidence this quarter. Nothing on target. In the corner, it's Clarkson. Lock at six. And Embiid pulls it down. Embiid's got 15 rebounds here tonight. The dish to Sexton. Or the three. And Embiid pulls it down. And, and he has definitely been struggling in this quarter. Yeah, he needs to mix things up on the offense. He simply just can't keep missing shots at this rate because he's destroying his teammates. Al Harden, after Colin Sexton's three-pointer that didn't go. And the activity he shows around the rim is why he is such a respected defender. Yeah, you can see why he's established that reputation. Strong understanding of how to defend at the rim. The 76ers trail by eight. To the left wing. To the paint. There's Embiid. That one goes in. And that's 17 points for Joel Embiid. No slowing Embiid down. He powers right past the contact. There's the pass to Toscano. Guarded by Embiid. Back to Sexton. Markin and trying to break loose. The shot by Sexton, no good. Philadelphia's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. There's Embiid. Excellent D there for Markinen. Jazz leading by six. Markson outside. Banked in off the glass. That was a disgusting first half he turned in, but it's been night and day for him after the break. Pass to House. Over to the left wing. Tucker finds Harden. Let's it go from 14. That shot misses. And it's Utah the other way. They've held a 12-point lead early. Maxi against Sexton. Markin and trying to break loose. Whistle blows. Bucket is good. And he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. Harris has checked in for Daniel House. And that one misses. Last season, of course, Marcus Smart on the Defensive Player of the Year. You know, Greg, it, it's rare to see a guard win it. Should perimeter players get more consideration from this point on? 
Uh, it's tough, Kev. I, I do think they should. And I think the, the numbers, though, tend to favor the rim protectors, but it's only right to recognize great defense at every position, especially at an age of positionless basketball. And so here is Philadelphia, a 12-point game. Taxi passes to Embiid. And he overshot that one, missing. Here's the Jazz with the ball. They're on an 18-7 run. Sexton against Maxi. Passes to Toscano. Outside, marking it. Beyond the arc. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Harden's got 10 rebounds here tonight. So active. And Harris wide open. He shoots. And it's off from three-point range. And with that, the Utah lead is cut down now to just 10 on the basket for Maxi. Those are some hustle points. Really bonus points when you put in a miss. Arkin in with it. He's against Tucker. And they call the foul. So he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. Marketing, absorbing the contact. He's really good at staying with his shot through that contact. Free throw good from Markinen. And Markinen is showing the aggressiveness you like to see in a guy with his skill set. Somebody who doesn't lack confidence when he shoots the ball. Two free throws coming up and they call the shooting foul. Shooting two. And he knocks down the first one. Drops them both. Time called here. The Jazz decide to talk it over. They're ahead by 11. 133 left in the fourth quarter. And now, let's take a look at the new balance player of the game. Tyrese Maxey. And the way he's made his mark with his work inside, he's just been a slasher tonight. Always moving, getting to the basket at will, and just seemingly taking advantage of a D that was reluctant to get in his way. Larson outside. Outside, marking it. Back to Clarkson. Guarded by Embiid. Good D by Embiid. And so it's Maxi who brings up the ball for the 76ers. Here's Harris. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. They can take their time on this possession. It wouldn't be a bad idea to just give themselves a little bit of a break. And at this point, just sort of running through the paces, as it appears it'll be a nice win here for the Jazz. And they're fully in control now, but there were some tense moments, I thought, for them uh, throughout this game. Uh, listen, they certainly weren't coasting, despite what the score looks like. I love the way they came together, though, when everything started to look a little dire and really put the hammer down. And they took charge when it counted and will be notching their ninth win overall. No doubt they came in very motivated to win this one and finish the season series at a game of peace. The one player that really stands out, of course, in this one, it was a dazzling game for Lowry Markkinen. 
and he's been a well-oiled machine on offense, keeping things simple on this end, getting the looks that he wanted, knocking him down. Shooting two. The well, free throw drops for MB. And MB drops them both. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Dunn looking over the floor. Pass to Fongecchio. Now done. Six on the shot clock. Shot from the top of the key. That one's rebounded by Embiid. McDaniels with the ball. And so it's Utah easily grabbing the win. Some good competition, but the hometown advantage and their ability to stay focused, I think, made the difference. Yeah, and the, the first step in becoming a good team is your ability to win at home. And they really seem to revel in that opportunity. And, and this is what they came out to do. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much, Rudy. Congrats on the win. What was working for you on offense tonight? Um, you know, I think our defense kind of got our offense into it. You know, we're that kind of team. Our defense makes our offense. We, we run the floor and we, and we share the ball. So um, whenever we out there playing defense like we did today, we usually are in a good position. Great performance tonight, Rudy. Congrats on the win. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that about wraps it up. This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.